Right, a quick update on the Technics SL5. Now, I put this together, like I cleaned up all the bits that I was going to and, you know, replaced those capacitors underneath, tested it. It actually, when it plays a record, it plays fine. Like, the speed is nice and stable, sounds very good. But uh, there's a problem at both the start and the finish. Sometimes it doesn't quite start right, like it uh, drops the needle into the space before the actual record starts and it gets to the end it actually stops before the record has actually stopped so you still got a bit of the song left before it uh, is finished now i figured there's something wrong with the 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 way the the arm moves it's uh, it was too loose so one of the issues is is that these plastics here now this is the plastic that houses the the rod slider that it slides along. Uh, as you can see, it's it's been cracked along here. Well, I've got uh, some photos of that, which I'll, I might put on just to show that a little bit better. And uh, I'll just uh, rearrange this so you can see underneath. Okay, and here's another one. Now, what this has is it has this little uh, rocker mechanism, and there's a solenoid that sort of pushes this... Um, back and that raises the arm and obviously when it retracts the arm will drop down. Now this was very stiff uh, but also as you can see this outer section here that goes into there we just have a look here it goes in there but it's supposed to be sort of fixed in place but as you can see I mean that can can weeble wobble around you know about three or four mil and that's way too much, way too much play. So I need to find a way to um, basically fix that into place because that's split and really there's no way to to unsplit it and, you know, put that back in. I mean, it's shrunk, the plastic shrunk, so it's just going to crack again. So let's just pause again. Okay, so I've got a variety of options that I'm considering and basically is, uh, I think... You know, we could put some glue around this and then put it into place and that should hold it in. So the question is, is do I go for like a, a strong sort of uh, hard glue or do I go for a soft type? Now, some of these soft types you could use for things like, you know, maybe repairing shoes and stuff like that. They've got a lot of flex in them. Um, and that might work well for something like this that's going to be under, you know, a constant amount of sort of force, but just needs a little bit of give. The issue I have if I use a hard glue is that it might just end up cracking off and then it's not holding anything again. Now this is another option that I have too, which is a, it's a, called a plastic repair kit basically, and well, it's for repairing plastic. And I've actually used a bit on uh, some of those cracks just to sort of fill them up. So this stuff is a plastic repair kit and it, uh, is a bit of a mix is a powder and some kind of liquid which is you know seems to have you know a fair amount of like styrene or some other kind of uh really it it's a really strong smell it, it takes me back to when i was uh, working in a, a lab doing plastics and stuff like that so a real strong styrene smell so this bonds quite well to the plastic i think this plastic is abs um so I can put a little bit, like I said, around there and put it in and maybe it bonds to this and maybe it bonds to that and maybe it's enough just to to hold it in place. But again, I'm worried that it's going to, it, it dries very hard. I'm just worried that maybe it's uh, going to end up just being hard and then basically you just got like a nice smooth thing that's just flopping around in there. So what to do? I feel like, you know, whichever choice I make, it's going to be wrong or it's not going to turn out quite the way I want. So anyway, I'll uh, muck around with that. I'll choose one and I'll do it and we'll see what the result is. Okay, after insulting the service manual, I found that that actual plastic uh, comes off 
pretty easily, just two screws. And of course, a couple of annoying solder joints, but that's okay, I'll undo those. And then I can take this part out and hopefully then I can actually fix it uh, probably better than I was hoping. All right, there it is, it's uh, glued in now. And the solution I went for was actually epoxy. And in fact, I'm not sure why I didn't think of that before. Uh, I generally like epoxies because, uh, you know, they stick well to the metals. And once it's in there, it's going to form to the shape of, you know, any irregularities and everything, and it'll make a nice snug fit. So I think it's unlikely that's going to sort of move around after that. So right now, we're just going to give it time to set. It's a 10 minute epoxy, but always give it a bit of extra time. It's uh, pretty cold here at the moment, so, uh, you know, a bit of extra time. And a little bit later, I'll probably sit it in front of a, the heater or, or on top of the oven after I use it or something like that, just to get a little bit of extra warmth in there and just uh, help cure the, uh, the epoxy.